The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industrials down one. You get the Nasdaq uh, down two. S&Ps are flat. And, folks, that we had flat markets right across the world last night. Asia was flat. Europe's flat. We're flat. Everything. Everyone's waiting for 2 o'clock uh, statement out here. We have the uh, gold contract up $4.40, trading at 1315 You got the silver market up $0.03, cents, $17.31. Light sweet crude, that's catching a bid. That's up $0.59. Cents, $0.50. $50.49 a barrel. The bond market, the 10 year note up to 12602. 30 year bond up 31507. Now, both notes and bonds have come down about the last seven trading days. The volume, however, has contracted in a large way the last two days. That is saying that it's going to have a shot to build cars to go higher once again. King dollar. King dollar's off 36 ticks, 91.525. The euro's trading at 119 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is out here at 111 and a half to the U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you get a great show. You want to understand the option market upside down. You want to understand what's going on in the markets upside down. You want to understand the futures market. Great show. And if you haven't test drove the Thinkorswim platform, folks, great time to do it. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see the banner on the top or the side. Hit the banner. Bring it up. They'll let you trade with paper money. You can follow along with Kevin as they put on these paper trades so that you can get an understanding of exactly how these future markets, these option markets work. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Mr. O'Brien. How's everything? Everything's great, man. You know, I gotta, before we get into the market, I got to tell you, you know, the Chicago Cubs were in Tampa last night. Oh. First time in six years. And in Tampa, folks, okay, they have a huge problem get filling, putting anyone in the stands. Well, the bottom sure. line is that the stands were full. It, it just, it was beautiful. It was a lot, uh, of, a lot of expatriated Cub fans living oh, down there in Florida. Big Tom. time, big time. It was really, it was really cool watching. It, 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 to me, it just goes to show that if you do have a good team, you can fill the stands too. I mean, that's right. that's the reality. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, it's an interesting tidbit that. Um, the Rays are owned by the old Spear Leeds guys. Is that right? I, yeah. I knew that was a Goldman guy. I didn't know because yes. Goldman bought Spear Leeds. I didn't know oh, that. Goldman so, bought Spear Leeds. Yeah. So the, the, they, they bought the Tampa Bay Rays with uh, with Goldman Sachs money. Yep. No, no, no doubt. And you know, so you know it's wild, Kevin, right now. There's a negotiation going on. And what it's about is that the Rays want to leave, and I said at a meeting, I says, listen, man, this is a Goldman guy. He's not leaving because he has the best lease in the world. They have so many acres down there. They're going to, you know, Jeff Vinnick came in and bought Tampa, him and Gates. This right. guy already owns St. Pete. It's like, well, he's not going to give it up. It's like, this is just right. negotiation, man. I mean, <laughs> he just probably wants a new stadium. Oh, yeah, exactly. Wants. No, no, for, exactly. for sure. They, they're, they're looking, they're, they look, uh, you know, to the south and they see what Miami just built there for, for the Marlins. That's a pretty nice stadium they got there in South Florida. I'm sure they just want an upgrade. That's what all these guys want. And they want the taxpayers to pay for it. No doubt, man. <laughs> We're going to knock on your door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So here's my question. Question, Tom. Why can't the Fed just announce this thing early and let us trade it all day? Isn't it the truth? Why do they got to wait till one? It drives everybody crazy. Everyone's sitting on their hands all day. These are the most boring days to trade. And it's even worse to talk about because there's, you know, Apple's actually making a little move today. Besides that, I, there's not much going on. And you know, they're down a quarter. When, when Kevin it talks about this, so Apple, you know, Apple's down 230. That's not the end of the world. But right. what is intriguing here, folks, is that with Apple being a largest waiting structure, inside the NDX 100, it's still not affecting the NDX 100. It's only down right. six. It's like, right. okay. so Pretty interesting. It, well, there is not a lot of movement going on here. I see, you know, I got about half my screen is red, the other half is green, and none of the numbers are very big. Yeah, there's no doubt. And what was 
somewhat different last night is that you had Asia waiting, you had yeah. Europe waiting this, this morning. Everyone is flat, folks, okay? So it's like, right. and, and it's not like they're waiting. You know what's amazing, Kevin? It's not like we're waiting for an announcement that is going to be, you no. know, a short-term rate. I mean, okay, right. so they're going to do something with the balance sheet or give, give a date. Well, what? Right. But it, you know what never ceases to amaze me, Tom, in 30 years of doing this? The market still moves. When everyone knows exactly what I know. they're going to do on this headline number, they're not going to do anything. The market will still move one way or another. It always amazed me. You know, and like when I'm looking at this right now, it seems that we got some divergence. Like when I look at the bonds and I look at the dollar, I'm saying to myself, man, one wants to go one way. one wants." To... So it's like, uh, okay, are we going to go both ways at 2 o'clock, which we know we can do, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, look at the 10-year yield now, 2-2-3. Two, two, right. I mean, that's not, you know, that's a pretty significant move they've had in the last week here. Oh, it is. You know, you know, yeah. I mean, we just went from 2.039. Right. You know, right. so that I was the question. It felt like a week ago, Tom. I asked the question: Are we going to really be at two percent in the ten-year yield with the with the markets at their all-time highs? And I guess the answer then was no. Right, right. And it, <laughs> it, every time that any of us look at this bond and say, "Okay, it has to go down and the rates right. have to go up," guess what, folks? That and you can bring this back. I, you know, depending on how long you've been in this market, folks. I remember, folks on CNBC 15 or 20 years ago say you don't want to be buying bonds because they're never going to make you any money. Well, guess what, <laughs> folks? Bonds have made more money than any market out there, okay? You know, the 30-year the bond went from 54 to 154. That's yeah. about as intense as you can get, man. I, I have always considered bond traders to be some of the smartest traders. Yeah, right. And, and you know, and grain traders. I thought be, be pretty smart traders as well in grains. Yes. But bond traders, I always thought were, were the smartest traders. You know, think about this. You can listen to all the rhetoric from today, but watch the ZQ, the Fed Funds Rate Future. Right. That's where the money's bet. Right. On a daily and weekly basis, that'll tell you more about where interest rates are going than any other number or any rhetoric that you're hearing coming out of the Fed, because that's where the actual money is bet on the table. And you know what's amazing is that that market, folks, is so much larger than we, you know, than our equity markets. I mean, it's it's, it's, it, it, right. it runs the world, right? I mean, basically, right. you know. I and mean, that's what we're going to talk about at the beginning of today's shows. We're going to go over it and show you exactly how to price out the ZQ and what it. Does what it's showing you. That's so cool, man. In That's, terms of rate hikes, yeah. That, and, and that makes so much sense because once you wrap your head around interest rates, folks, all that matters is that what is the real interest rate? What does it cost you for money? What can you make on that money? And when we're taking a look at public markets, of course, what ends up happening is that because they bought so many shares back, that interest rate structure is going to make have a huge um, indication on what. Big companies are going to do, you know? Sure. And not, not to mention the financials, right? Yeah. Anyone oh. that stores money, right? The net, net interest margin, it does, it's not their only form of income, but it's a pretty nice little kicker for them when, when the net interest margin goes up. It, it's because, uh, what Kevin's saying, folks, they already have the money there. As soon as it goes up, guess what? They make money that second. That second. Exponentially, right. Yep. Listen, folks, right here. 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 45, sec 45 minutes. Just jump on your cell phone, tfnn.com, hit Tiger TV. Kevin, have a great one and a safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30 day money back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow down 10, and NASDAQ's off 5. S&P's are flat out here. Uh, let's go uh, take a look at Apple. So uh, what's kind of, well, what's really, actually, let's go inside the NDX first. So inside the NDX 100 uh, out here, um, moving it up or down, you have the um, uh, Adobe is the number one uh, that's putting seven negative points into it. You got uh, World, uh, no, uh, Western Digital putting that four negative points. Uh, Avco Technology, uh, three and a half. Apple, two and a half. Now, what's intriguing about that, of course, is that Apple does, is a large weighting structure. Uh, bottom line, um, oh, no, let me do this another way. Sorry about this, folks. Okay, because Apple should be the largest. It's not, though. Interesting, man. Okay, so Adobe is the uh, largest mover on the way down. That's down 4.5%. Uh, uh, or seven dollars and twenty-one cents. You get the Western Digital down four point two percent, or three eighty. You get Norwegian Cruise, Cruise Lines down two percent. Uh, you got to send some white light out to uh, all the islands, folks. Okay, that storm came in this morning and it's devastating. Um, good old Maria is uh, uh, raising havoc on those islands. You get Checkpoint Software down uh, one point six percent, putting. Uh, some gains into the NDX 100, even though it is in the negative. Uh, you get QVC up 2%. C-Trip is up 1.8. Inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness out here. Uh, the strength... There we go. Um, the strength out here is uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is putting uh, 15 positive points. Home Depot's putting 10. IBM's putting 5. Taken away from it... Uh, 3M is putting net 20 negative points. Apple's putting 18. Johnson & Johnson's putting 10. If we go over to Apple and take a look at Apple, Apple very well, folks, uh, may end up uh, being an ABC structure on the way down. Now, uh, you've had this uh, gap that's been open for since the August 1st. That's 150. You're at 156 right now. You're breaking the swing point. The swing point that you're breaking is 157.91. Uh, and it certainly looks like you're going to have the volume. You need 44 million shares. We're already at 10 million shares, and you're all of, what, a half hour into the marketplace. So your A point on this would be 164, let's call it 165. Your B point is uh, one, let's say, 58. You get seven bucks. That would bring you to 153. If we get to 153, what you're going to see here is that uh, you're into the gap because the, the swing points are 154. 
63. That's going to say that we're going right after the close in that gap of uh, 150. And if, in fact, uh, we get some expansion on the way down, it won't take much uh, for Apple to uh, start dragging the NDX 100 down. So let's go over and take a look at the NDX 100. Because thus far, as that we were, when we were talking with uh, man, Mr. Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, uh, bottom line is that for Apple to get hit like this, this NDX uh, is not taking a hit. So there's, uh, there's, uh, there are equities inside that NDX 100 that are basically holding that up right now. Uh, what we do have is that uh, we hit the price point of uh, 59.85. Um, and it's going to need more volume uh, down at those levels. Uh, you know, we hit that at uh, 10 minutes of 10 this morning. Um, that's not enough for juice just yet. What we also have, though, and this is why it's saying it wants to go down there and, and go after the low, is that what we did do, and this was yesterday at 9.40 in the morning, we have a high volume swing low at 59.75. So I expect, number one, you're going to see that get hit. Uh, number two, the bottom line is we'll see whether that gets hit and if, do, if it does have volume as it moves into lower price. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume stocks in this market. Yesterday was a low volume market. Uh, we'll see wh where we shake out today. You have General Mills down at $2.66. You get Pfizer up 43. Uh, Transocean is up 26. You get uh, Bank of America down 18. Micron Technology is up 43. Bed Bath & Beyond, that's getting hit. That's down $4 right now. Uh, that is almost down 20%. That is an additional ABC structure on the way down. If you want to see um, an equity going right back to 2008 low, it's Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, the 2008 low is $16.23. The high of that low is $25.65. You are going after it, and this was just vicious, man. I mean, this thing just came down from 80 bucks in January of 2014, um, and it's going right after it. And the real kicker is going to be, um, is that going to basically take it apart? Because right now, okay, let's look at this. It's a monster ABC down anyway. 80 bucks is your A. Yeah, so it's a $40 ABC. That gets you to $12. Unreal. So... You get a confirmed ABC structure down on a monthly basis. The price projection is approximately $12. The low of 2008 is $16. Um, hey, we'll see. Oh, I see. Okay, so, <laughs> wow. And you want to see something crazy. So, in 2000, folks, that is crazy. Okay, these, these high volume lows and highs, if you have the out of time in the trade, folks, in my book, you're going to see on a continual basis how these things get tested. Once a, once, a, once a stock or anything that you can get volume on turns, and if you have high volume spikes, highs or lows, keep your eye on them because this is crazy. This is not going to just, well, first off, the, the ABC structure is saying it wants to go to $12. But you know what's laying out here? What's laying out here on a monthly basis is March of 2000 at $11. And the volume just sticks out like a sore thumb. That's where it's going. Unreal. That is crazy. Well, the good news is that it's not going down to zero uh, when you gauge it out. And because what, what does happen, folks, is that when you do gauge them out and they go to zero, guess what? That means Amazon is coming after them and, and it's going out of business. Uh, as we talk about Amazon, let's go take a look at Amazon. Uh, Amazon right now is flat. Uh, the way Amazon's trading, though, which is, you know, Amazon has this high volume low at 9.27, that's saying, guess what? We're gonna see that high volume low get tested. Um, Google, we we'll take a look at the Google. Uh, Google right here, that's up $9, 8.59. dollars um, That's gonna need a lot more juice than this. Uh, you have 371,000 uh, shares right now. You're going into, at 9.35, it's gonna need like three and a half million shares in order to get into higher price, stay into higher price. Gold contract. Now, we, coming up at 2 o'clock, folks, we are going to get some volatility out here. The thing that's amazing, it's like, okay, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> like, what is the announcement going to be? Um, it looks like the way that this market is setting up, it looks to me like it's going to be a little more aggressive um, because 
The way gold is setting up, gold is saying that it wants it to lower price, which is 1297. And if that's the case, that would be saying that we're going to see uh, bonds also pull back, like the 10 years at 126. That could go to 125.21 on a heartbeat. And then we would see the dollar get up into like the 92,420 area. And the real kick is going to be, if that's the case, what is the S&P going to do? I mean, my take is that it does want to go lower. Um, but the, more the, the closer that we start getting up to that uh, 2 o'clock area, if, in fact, the market is trading still like this, uh, that, would, that would be saying that the statement's going to be a little more hawkish than the market's looking for right now. And um, you get some uh, good volatility in, in those uh, structures. You stay right there, folks. We'll be gonna be coming right back. Dow right now, down four. NASDAQ is off seven. S&P's are flat. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days, and will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, is flat. NASDAQ is off uh, four. S&Ps are also flat. Let's go to our man, Tom in Plymouth. Hey, Tom, what's going on, brother? Hey, good morning, Tom. How you been? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Pretty good, thanks. Good, good. So. Hey, hey I was wondering what you think about an entry. I got stopped out last week there when I entered um, about on this TVIX, but boy, is it low now. 
Let's take a look. So TVIX, folks, is the Velocity Shares two-time short-term exchange-traded note um, that is based on two times the performance of the uh, S&P short-term futures index. And that's the, that's the difference here, folks. So, oh, look at this. Okay, so no doubt it's, it's laying right there. It actually, 1227, it hit the lows 1219. Well, you, you know you're always throwing the dice on this baby. Um, it's a crap shoot, yeah. I'd throw the dice, though. You know, that's, you know the, the way this is set up right now, um, you know, you get, you get the VIX itself, which this, it trades off the VIX futures, but the VIX right now got to 983 today. It's rejected that. You know, it's at the lower levels. It's where it broke out from last time on the 8th. The low there was 952. We got to 983 today. It's already rejected that. You know, it's like. I guess the VIX could test its, what, 8-something eight, eight low, 880 low. But, geez, it seems like uh, that seems like a long way down for the VIX now, too. But, you know. Well, I agree. Uh, you know, this morning, you know, as of a quarter of 10, and what does end up happening, folks, is that uh, inside the option market, the bottom line is that you're not going to throw big option trades on uh, when the market just opens. Institutions definitely aren't. Um, they're, put, they're buying insurance right now, man. You know, so uh, if, yep. if you just look at that aspect, that would be saying that the TVIX, um, you know, should be moving at 2 o'clock. I mean, that's, that's how this is set up right now. Yeah, it's four dollars lower than I liked it last week, so I guess maybe I'll venture in a little bit and we'll see what happens. And uh, well, the, the the hardest thing there, you know, Tom and folks, is going to be at the announcement. We know what happens, folks, is that the volatility gets huge, and what does happen, it moves both ways. Yeah, it can give you the head fake. Yeah, it can. You know, and I suspect it will. You know, uh, the way this market seems to be working at this particular point, which I'm not, in one way I'm elated and the other way I'm not, and it, and it has to do with the gold market. So let's look at gold for a second, because watch, what I'm trying to put together, folks, is the aspect of how all these instruments move together. And when I look at what gold's doing, I don't like it, actually. See, gold's up 580 right now, and the volume is 142,000 contracts, which is pretty good. But we've already given up three dollars in price. It's like, okay, man, you want to get down into twelve ninety-seven. So if gold wants to go to twelve ninety-seven, that if we go over to the bonds, what that would be saying is that the bond market also is not going to hold higher price. We're at one twenty-six. That's saying that we're going to get down to one twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-one. And then if that that happens, what well, that that's saying that the dollar wants to go higher. And if that's the case, then you're going to be right on the T VIX because that is saying that it's going to be a more hawkish tone and that will say that the rates are going to go higher sooner and I suspect that's going to bring the S&P back but it will also bring gold back and it will bring the dollar up and bring bonds down and the real question is going to be like okay how long does that hold you know what I mean but it looks like to me right now that's how I'm kind of looking at what's going to happen at two o'clock. All right. Well, that's good enough for me in the crystal ball, I guess. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. You too. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see what Air Force uh, Hurricane Hunters just indicated. Uh, they, Air Force Hurricane Hunters indicate that Jose is a, uh, is a strong tropical storm. Okay, so at least that that's all that is turning into, but that's, uh, Marie, folks, is uh, barrel, well, has barreled into uh, Puerto Rico uh, and done some uh, damage. There's no two ways about that. Let's go take a look at the GDX, okay? We stay at this gold market for a second. So the GDX, you get 5 million shares traded. You're going into 45 million. Yeah, you just fill in the gap on this. So the GDX has a gap to be filled at twenty-four dollars and twelve cents. We hit twenty-four oh nine thus far, and you, you, the volume there is vicious. That was at uh, ten minutes of uh, four two days ago. Seven point five million. It's no way it's going to do seven point five million uh, coming into that area. We've, we've done five point uh, five million thus far. The uh, 
Let's go back to Apple. Uh, actually, we'll go to AVGO. Uh, AVGO. So some of Apple's suppliers, um, yeah, this is AVGO is coming down. That's kind of light volume, though. 700, yeah, 760,000 shares. That can go to 238, 240, or 245. Um, Apple, different animal, though. And, and, you know, Apple's not stopping. Yeah, six, 13, uh, Apple will do the volume for an ABC structure on the way down. You get 13 million shares right now. Let's go to FedEx. So FedEx came out with numbers. Uh, FedEx shook off. And this is where a public relations is really smart, folks. So FedEx last night, come out with numbers. FedEx was 217. It was trading down $6. And they didn't make their numbers. And you know what they, <laughs> this, is, this is as good as you can get. So what they did, is that they, and this had, this had to do with, uh, they had bought TNT, which is one of the largest deliverers in Europe. Um, and where they did is that they blamed a cyber attack on TNT for the $300 million hit. And the market believed them. That's the bottom line. Well, it's intriguing, and we'll see that, uh, you know, how this comes out, um, not only today, uh, but the next time they come out with numbers, is that TNT going to be a hit on a continual basis you know, people, markets, you know, they'll, they'll believe you a few times. Uh, this was the first time that they had to put TNT numbers into their own numbers. And, um, you know, right now, it not only shook off the $6 down, you're up 375 Your high is 219.99, and you've hit 220.50. Um, you know, so the bottom line is that you've got over the high. The volume's not bad right now, but if we actually closed... Uh, under 216.47, uh, then there'd be uh, some problems out here. Uh, let's go take a look at the UPS and see how UPS is reacting, because FedEx has been much stronger than UPS. UPS is also hanging at these highs. You're up uh, 90 cents right now. You're at 117.87. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, different ball game. Uh, that is getting taken to the cleaners. Um, let's go take a look at the SMHs. For one of the tigers out here. So the SMH is right now uh, trading down 68 cents, $91.92. Okay, so this has got over the high of two days ago, which is 92.72. You're gonna need some volume off this. Right now, you only got 820,000. You need about, well, you could get three and a half million. That's what you're going to need, about three and a half million on that baby. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials are up eight. NASDAQ is down one. S&P's are flat. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of 
timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for the special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effects, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, is up four. You get the Nasdaq uh, down three. Uh, let's go take a look at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, folks, uh, not uh, the oil number. So uh, where are we? Yeah, let's see. Crude. Uh, let's see what the. Okay, so uh, crude oil inventories rose 4.59 million barrels. Let's get the rest of these numbers for you. Uh, that was right in line. That was right in line. But they were they were looking for a, a jump of uh, five to six million uh, barrels. Oh, sorry, folks. Oh, excuse me, folks. They were looking for that. Uh, just that. Uh, so uh, that was the expectation uh, at this time of the year. Uh, bottom line had, hasn't actually done too much uh, to that uh, oil market out here. Some of the other commodities, because what we are going to have out here because of the FOMC, you're going to have these currencies moving. Uh, you have uh, wheat is up 1.4 percent, coffee is up 1.4. You have uh, lean hogs down four tenths. Everything else is uh, pretty flat. New York uh, heating oil, uh, well, heating oil in general, uh, that's up eight tenths of one percent. We got the sugar market uh, up 1.3 percent. We go over and we take a look at uh, Microsoft, MSFT. Uh, Microsoft's been trading at highs, uh, folks. Uh, it's hanging up there pretty well. Uh, Microsoft right now, uh, $75.10, uh, 15 cents. That hit the, the high two days ago. That was a $75.95. Uh, NVIDIA, NVDA. NVIDIA has been running that chip market in a big way. Um, okay, so this is, uh, you know, NVIDIA bottom line is looking like it wants to pull back. And if you do get that NVIDIA to, to pull back, uh, I suspect, um, we were just talking about those SMHs, um, you could get some action uh, inside those SMHs. Uh, the NVIDIA is 6% of the uh, SMH. Taiwan Semiconductor is 12.6%. You get Intel 10.3%. Um, and what did happen the last time that uh, NVIDIA went south, um, man, that went south fast and furious, 168 to 142. That is what actually led the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ down on June 9th. Uh, let's go over to the XAU, the HUI. Excuse me, folks. Oh, my God. The XAU right now trading 88 bucks. That's up 79 cents. Let's 
coming at 88 bucks. And it's going to need some big juice at it at this level. Yeah, we did 89 million shares. Yesterday we ended up doing 28 million. Now the 28 million was pretty cool because what, what that was doing is that that was going into the breakout area from August 28th, which is 86.65. We hit 86.53. We rejected it. So the, the, man, there's a lot of divergence here. Because, see, when you look at that, that's saying that, okay, that did what it should have done, pulls back in, has light of volume, rejects it, now we start moving higher. The, let me go to ABX. ABX is the largest weighting structure inside the XAU. So ABX come down yesterday with 7.9 million. You go into 13, rejected price. We're doing 1.3, 1.6. Well, we'll see what we do coming up to 2 o'clock. Um, if ABX can, right now it doesn't have the volume. So 2, we're almost into it an hour. Yeah, it doesn't have the volume because we, we need like over 11 million shares. So every time I keep looking at this, this is going to get intriguing because we haven't had uh, a hardcore statement from the Fed in a long period of time. And every time I keep looking at this market right now, it looks to me that we are actually going to, they're going to basically be a little aggressive, which would be pretty wild in the context uh, of the two storms that we got. Maybe it's just, hey, we'll, we'll find out. It's, we'll find out. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the dollar, let's go back to that dollar for a second. Now, the dollar's laying there at 91.495. And if we go overseas, we take a look at overseas. Overseas is still waiting just for the Fed also. So it doesn't look like Europe's going to move at all today, folks. Europe is absolutely just like we are. Uh, in fact, yeah, I'll start with Asia last night. So Asia last night, um, you had the Nikkei flat. You had the Hang Seng up two-tenths of one percent. Shanghai was up two-tenths. Uh, Taiwan was absolutely flat. If we go to Europe this morning, this is what you have. You have um, the FTSE down one-tenth, the CAD is flat, the DAX is down one-tenth. Um, and uh, there's a question, uh, Tom, do you think that they start unwinding the balance sheet that will spook the market? What the, the guidance that they've given in the past, okay, was that they are going to unwind the balance sheet. When they unwind the balance sheet, they're going to unwind it at $50 billion a month. And that's nothing, folks, okay? That's not a big deal. That's, it's, it's going to be like, okay, the market's perception of it uh, may be different this time. That's, that's how this seems to be shaken out. So when they, when they, the last statement that they had about unwinding the balance sheet, and what unwinding the balance sheet means is this, is that, okay, so the Fed has bought notes, bonds, mortgage-backed securities, all in the, in the context of these are all debt instruments. When they say unwind it, what they've done thus far is this, is that let's say they get a, a note that's a two-year note. As that expires, they buy another two-year note or they buy something else, another, another instrument, another debt instrument. So what that has done, of course, is that that is more demand for the amount of supply that's out there. When they say they're unwinding it, what they specifically are doing is that it's not that they're selling anything. They're not. What they're doing is that they're not buying the amount that are expiring. That's how they're going to unwind this thing. And the thing that's intriguing about this, of course, is that if that's done on a slow basis, the amount of money that has, gone, has been made um, inside this structure is absolutely huge. And, you know, because of the fact that the bonds are an inverse correlation. So what ends up happening is that when we take a look at, you know, the interest rate was at 4%. Now, you're, you're, you know, let's go six years ago, and then you get down to 2%. That means that you made money hand over fist because as, the, as they are unwinding it, that money goes to the Fed. That Fed money ends up going into our Treasury. And if you wonder why uh, Japan... And China owns so many bonds, that's why they own them, because 
they have made a fortune, folks. And I'm, I'm talking about a fortune. It's it, when, when I hear folks saying that, oh, they're going to sell our, our debt. It's like, oh, really? They've, they've made so much money on our debt over the course of years. You just take a look at a chart. It's the most bullish chart you've ever seen in our lifetime. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're 70 years or younger, you know, yeah, it's, that's it. I mean, we went from 55 up to 177. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go over and take a look at that uh, Apple again. So they just took Apple another leg down. Apple's going to be a little problem child uh, for the NDX 100, folks. Uh, you got an ABC structure on the way down. You're going to have the volume. You're breaking the uh, swing point here of uh, 157.91. You need 44 million shares. You're already done 15.9 million, so let's call it 16 million. You're down 336, and it looks like uh, Apple's going to suck this uh, NDX 100 uh, down into lower price. We go into the three Qs. You take a look at the three Qs. Right now, you're only down 34 cents. You're trading at 145.46. Uh, that being said, intraday, uh, you have that high volume low from yesterday at 145.11. It looks like it's going to go after that, and I expect you're going to go after that uh, um, as uh, Thinkorswim is coming up right now. Uh, so we'll see exactly uh, just how fast and furious uh, that uh, baby wants to go. What you always want to keep in mind inside the NDX 100 
uh, when that goes, folks, okay, that can go down 30, 40, 50 points in a heartbeat. They, uh, when they go south, uh, everyone goes south, and they go south very quickly. Uh, just as we're talking, when I just started this, we just went down an additional uh, 10 points. Right now, you're down 21. When, when I just come back on, we're only down 10. Uh, what's wide open out here is the high volume low from yesterday, which is the 59.67. You're only 10 points away from it. Uh, you trade like this, we are going to uh, blow that thing away because uh, that is a high volume low. But uh, thus far, we've already done, let's see, we're five. Yeah, you're six minutes into this bar. And it looks like it will end up doing about uh, 10,000 contracts. And you're going into 7,700 contracts. You stay right there, folks. We get our Think of Swim coming up next. And of course, then we'll go into our, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, um, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon, of course, 2 o'clock, folks. Fireworks, strap it in, baby. Dow right now is down 4. NASDAQ is off 15. S&Ps are flat. Stay right there, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien.